want a supercar. Look at the word, supercar. Says it all, doesn't it? They're a car with a cloak on and their pants on the outside. They're supercars. A supercar is the pinnacle of everything that's possible with a road legal motor car. It's basically a race car with number plates. A supercar represents escapism, doesn't it? It makes people dream. When you look at a supercar, it just makes your life better in that moment. Supercars, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, those crazy kind of Milan catwalk fashion shows where you see these ridiculous models wearing ridiculous clothes that you'll never, ever, ever wear on the high street. But it's not about that. It's actually about design. It's about expression. It's about capability. It's about saying how far we can push the envelope. Supercars all share the same basic DNA. They have bone-shaking performance and a minimum top speed of around 200 miles an hour. The lowest of low rides, which makes you feel like you're a racing driver. State-of-the-art technology, a design that makes you draw. I love a supercar. I mean, who doesn't? That's, uh, I guess that is the dream for most people, isn't it? It's a dream, isn't it? It encapsulates people's sense of ambition, I think. So which extraordinary cars have made our shortlist of the world's greatest? Our panel are unanimous that there's one supercar they can't wait to talk about. An absolute game changer. For me, this could possibly be the poster car of the century. It's just mad numbers on this car. Everything is as big as it's possible to be. I mean, it's got a W16 engine. <laughs> what even is one of those things? The first car to make the shortlist, unleashed in 2005, is the incredible Bugatti Veyron. Now, you could be the single biggest hater of supercars on the planet, but if you're in front of a Veyron, you just have to stand back, hold your hands up and go, wow. You've created something iconic. There was a lot of anticipation for the launch of the Bugatti Veyron, and it didn't disappoint because it was astonishingly fast. And stylistically, it looked like nothing else on the road. I think the Veyron is a thing of wonder and brilliance. It's an engineering tour de force, and we're very lucky to inhabit a time when we're still allowed to make things like that. It might not be surprising to see the Veyron made our shortlist, but it might surprise you to learn that it's actually a Volkswagen. The German giant bought the Bugatti mark in 1998, 42 years after Ettore Bugatti's original company shut down. Bugatti had a rich pre-war history with racing cars, so when VW thought about making a supercar, it seemed like a marriage made in heaven. The Bugatti Veyron is an interesting car made by Volkswagen Group. It was just the whole thing was basically to win the corporate game of top trumps, to have the top figure, the top speed, the biggest of everything, just the superest of all supercars. And boy, did they do it. Everybody understands top speed. Like this car is quicker than that car. What's the fastest car in the world? Veyron. Job done. And everyone understands that, everyone gets it, everyone respects the Veyron for that single reason. The Veyron can reach 60 kilometers an hour in just 2.46 seconds. And its top speed is so fast, you can't even achieve it without special permission. You actually need a second key, the top speed key, in order to unlock this car's full potential. You literally have to put it into the hole next to the driver's seat, turn it, and the car will then run through a list of checks to make sure that it's ready and that you're ready. And once it's confirmed that, then it will unlock the top speed from 213 miles an hour to in excess of 250 miles an hour. That's nuts. It's pretty epic if you think it's a road legal car that people can drive on public roads and it has that sort of performance. It's, it's extraordinary. It's so fast, it's so beautiful, it's so brilliantly engineered. You know, I've actually walked around a Bugatti deliberately with a mindset to try and find a fault. It's flawless. I mean, any car on the planet you can find something wrong with it. I couldn't find anything wrong with it. 
there was one thing wrong with it. The price. The Veyron was the world's most expensive production car, costing over one million pounds each, which wasn't even enough to make it. This entire car is basically just the Volkswagen Group posturing. It's there to prove they're the biggest, the cleverest, the most magnificent, because the whole thing is a vanity project. These cars do not make any money. In fact, they lose money. For a start, the Bugatti factory is a converted chateau in France. Each car is handmade using components developed from scratch. The heat generated by the engine is so extreme, it needs 10 radiators to cool it down. It's got two types of brakes, mechanical and air fueled, taking the car from 100 miles an hour to a standstill in just 3.4 seconds. The Veyron reminds me of Concorde. They said it couldn't be done. It's a thing of utter wonder, incredibly clever, just to how they've made that thing work. Engineering at its greatest. The impossible made possible, maybe, but not everyone is bowled over by this supercar. You can't argue with the technology underneath the Veyron. It's insanely fast, mind-blowing levels of performance. And yet, having said all of that, there's something about it I don't quite like. That's going to be a controversial statement, I know, but I think it's the styling. I'm just not a fan. There should be no human being on the planet that should knock a Bugatti. In fact, if that person exists and they're in your life, take them out of your life. You don't need that negativity. It's just purely there for headline figures, just to grab that headline that says, look at me, I'm the fastest car in the world. It's got no real presence other than that. It's not even that brilliant to look at. Actually, I think it's quite ugly. Mike's not a fan of the Bugatti. You kidding me? Oh, no, that's it. <laughs> I said, get rid of negative people. Mike Brewer, delete. He's gone. It's not the kind of car you'd walk away from, turn around and stare at it. It's just not poster worthy.